Okay, great. So as we go through this, um, what I find is that there are places where it's almost as if your higher self will give me some of the words and some of the language to represent you. So I may say some things in here that you didn't verbally say, but I had a very strong sense of, yeah, and, and these are the words behind your words, and these are the feelings behind your words. So I'm just going to I'm just going to roll with it and yeah. you can tell me um, if you feel that it resonated. So, so Kevin, you were born in Darrington, Washington, even though you grew up in, even though you live in Arlington now. Mm -hmm. And it was the first, let me see here. So until you were in fourth grade, that's where you were. Mm -hmm. And what was really special about Darrington was that it was really it was a really small, very tight knit community where everybody knew everybody. There were no groups, there were no cliques. It was just kids being kids. And you had this experience of almost what I would consider kidtopia, is what it sounds like, um, until the end of fourth grade, when your dad moved so he could be closer to work. But up until that time, you had a really, it sounds like you had an experience that really imprinted something on your nervous system, something that had you know how good it really could be. And it was also, now your grandmother died when you were four years old, not fourth grade. That's so right. for the first for the first four years of your life, also in Darrington, you had this experience of this very loving being who was just so incredibly present with you. Mm -hmm. And so being in this community, having had that experience with your brother, there was something really special that was imprinted on your, on your nervous system. And when you were in fourth grade, as your dad moved to be closer to work, that's when all of this basically just got taken away from you. You were thrust into a new environment. It was a new school. You were the new kid. And it was such a stark contrast to the level of comfort and warmth and richness and groundedness that you had really grown up with. There were cliques there. You were the outsider. The kids were unkind in ways. They called you four eyes and Dumbo. And it was just a dramatically different experience. And you spent seven years in that um, in that community, inside of that container. And that was such a such a, a sad and painful contrast to what it was that you had grown up with. And in some ways, it was it was like there was a, a tremendous sense of loss for what you had had previously with your grandmother, with your community, with um, with your life up to that point. Mm -hmm. And so during that time, to add to the, the weight of the separation, your father was diagnosed with cancer when you were in ninth grade. He passed in 10th grade. And that was a period of, of 18 months um, you know, over which that happened. And being with him you know, as he went through um, you know, his own death process was, was really really difficult and, and, and traumatizing experience, despite the beauty um, that was a part of that as well, which, which you also spoke to, you know, that it was, it was sad and it was heartbreaking, but it was, there was also a, a tremendous amount of beauty that existed in there. You know, and, and recognizing that when you when you got the word from your mother that he had passed, you know, there was the sadness of, of him no longer being here, but also really thanking God that he was out of his pain. Mm -hmm. So when you were in 11th grade, you, the, it was almost like this, uh, Something, something shifted and 
it was the in almost the role of the um of the savior of the mentor of the of the guide you were you were given a bridge to a completely new experience where you were um you were able to go to this private school and going from a, a class of something like 900 kids you went to a class of 16 kids and it was a school year where you already had four friends and so for the next two years that was your high school experience. And in your words, the most amazing experience. Mm -hmm. Because now you had so many friends and you would spend your paper route, you know, uh, saving up for this 68 Mustang that all the girls wanted to hang out in. That you took two of the most popular girls to the prom. Like such an incredible switch from what you had been inside. You know, and as, as I look at that with you, it was almost like, it was almost like that experience of being in Darrington had been put into a pressure cooker for seven years, seven years of feeling almost the, the loss and, and grieving that experience inside of this pressure cooker of this other school. And then when you were put back into an environment where there was so much more camaraderie and closeness and safety, it was almost like the sense of like, now that, that part of you that had been inside of that pressure cooker could just expand exponentially starting from that point, moving forward in your life, which is where, um, which, which is in many ways, the, the incubator of our greatest gifts. When we go from having something, losing it, getting it in that pressure cooker, then being put back into an environment and having that just explode out of us because now we're so primed for that and so appreciating it. So the you that moved forward in the world from that point forward was also the same you from um, that lived four blocks from your elementary school. And we talked about the story about the massive pine tree, that one day you decided you were gonna climb that fucking pine tree mm -hmm. and got as high as you could. And then you realized you could get higher and higher and higher. And you could see more of the neighborhood and then more of the town and then more of the whole local area. And what I love about that story is that as you talked about it, the way that you just lit up, the way you dropped into such a, um, a sense of passion and exhilaration for being able to see more and more and more and discover, wow, how far can I see? Mm -hmm. That was the, the essence of the inquisitive, curious, ever-expanding being that you are wanting to learn more, to see more, to impact more, to experience more. How much higher can I get? Mm -hmm. So for you, having, having had the experience you had in Darrington and having, having your grandmother taken away from you, your childhood community taken away from you, your father taken away from you, and being, being also a man of such deep heart, of such deep care, of um, probably highly empathic is my sense, to feel those things so deeply, have them taken away from you, and then finally be put back into a place where those, the, the way those aspects of your life lived inside of you, giving them fertile ground to fully begin to grow, instilled in you the enormous value of community, of friends, of feeling connected to each other, of having people who are on your side, people who can, you can count on to be there for you. Mm -hmm. And because of that value, that's how you choose to be for other people. That's how you choose to be with your family. That's how you choose to be with your friends. Then that's specifically, and that's what you bring as you facilitate million dollar relationships. Mm -hmm. Because you're the conduit of trust and because you bring that, 
because people feel trust for you and they feel the trust that you have for others, it allows them to have the trust for each other. And that's, that's the million dollar gift right there. As you said, the steward of relationships and the better you steward, the better you steward who you are and become more trusted. And that's something that you take very seriously. And so on your path to finding all of this, you had also gone through a second, um, how did I refer to it? As a, uh, as the first one was a, um, um, what do they call it? The incubator, the compressor, the, uh, the steamer. <laughs> I'm blanking on the word that I use for it right now. The, uh, I, I am too now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'll get it back. The, uh, yeah, what was the word I used for that? People have them in their kitchens. They're the uh, the steam heaters, the um, pressure cooker. Pressure cooker, yes, yeah. pressure cooker. Yeah, you had, you had gone through a second pressure cooker as you were trying to find the way that you do you in the world. Because before 12 years ago, that's when you had been trying a business model that was just not right for you. As we talked about, it was like moving through the world with a vertebrae out of place. It just, it didn't fit. It didn't feel right. Things weren't working. The energy wasn't flowing. And that was when you were in a really dark spot, going down a path that wasn't working and looking back on that flight home from Dallas, wishing the plane would crash because you were so miserable with this, you know, with this energetic vertebrae out of place that you're thinking, well, maybe my wife could just get the insurance money. My family could just get the insurance money because what I'm doing is not serving. Mm -hmm. And that was when you had the experience of connecting those two guys and started to realize, wait a second, I've got something here. I've got something here. You know, from that came this realization that I can create trust between and among people. And so as a result of this, people, off, people open up to you in that way, the conduit of trust, as you had said. Because the problem that you solve is that entrepreneurs are continually faced with puzzles and problems they need to solve, and it can take a really long time. And the gift that you are, the perfect tool for the perfect job that you are, is that you can speed that up by connecting them with the people who can solve those problems. And the more successful someone is, the bigger problems they have and the higher value the solving of those problems has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most people think that the more successful someone is, the less problems and challenges they have. But what's really true is that the more successful they are, the bigger problems they have, the bigger challenges they have. And what it is that you know fully in your heart is that what they need most is people around them that they can trust and confide in. Because they may look successful from the outside and people mistakenly think they have it all figured out. But, but at any given time, they're dealing with very real challenges that have them lose sleep at night, that affect their health, that affect their relationships, that affect how they are in the world, that affect their happiness. And what it is that you have to bring is a level of meaningful conversation, the ability to listen with full presence and give them this rarely received gift of being seen and heard and understood and then, and then given a, um, a, a bridge to connect with the, the person who's the exact right person for them to connect with. Mm -hmm. You know, and as we're looking at, you know, you going from being the, um, the million dollar relationship guy to the billion dollar relationship guy, what we see is that the essence of who you are, Kevin, all the way back to the time you climbed that massive pine tree 
And we're so excited to see how high you could get and see how much you could see and how much you could take in and how much you could expand your vision, how much exhilaration you could experience. This whole experience that you're in, what it is that you're doing right now, this next phase that you're about to move into is just like climbing that pine tree. The higher you go, the more you see. And you're really excited about what's already happened and what the future holds. Because just as you see more now than you did five years ago, five years, uh, five years, uh, let's say you see more now than you did 12 years ago, and then you climbed higher. And then you see more than you did 10 years ago when you climbed higher. And you see more than you did five years ago when you climbed higher. Because your spirit, it, it just wants to keep climbing. It just wants to keep expanding. It just wants to keep how much impact can I make on this world during my time? How much of a legacy of, of, of net positive impact on the world can I leave behind? And you're just getting started. Mm -hmm. yeah. What people don't understand about your work is that they they hear about you and they think, oh, can you help me get some connections? Can you help me grow this thing? But what they don't understand is that they their job is to be in collaboration with you. Their job is to already be making an impact in the world and want to make an even bigger impact and understand that revenue is just a result of impact, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So it's not around how can I make more money, but it's about how can we make a bigger impact together? The reason people can trust you is because you've long believed that relationships are the most valuable asset we can possess. And what allows what allows people to hold and expand, what, what, what allows people to hold and expand relationships is trust. It's the glue that holds it all together. It's the catalyst that allows it all to expand. Trust is the true currency of relationships. And that's how you treat people because with trust, we can accomplish great things together. It's how you live and it's why people can trust you. Mm -hmm. Mic drop. Wow. Wow. That is really good. That is mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Garrison, thank you so much for that. Thank you. You, you have a real gift for sure. To know you on this level and really not just not just see and hear what you're about, but really feel what you're about. Because I really do feel the the depth of of sincerity behind all of this for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought this would also be a, a great way to go into doing a podcast together. Now that we've got this, um, you know, this uh, this foundation of of yeah. of relating. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How long have you been doing this, Garris? Well, let me, I should probably just hit stop on the recording, huh? Yeah, sure. Okay. How long have you been doing this? Well, there's two answers. 